Uh, all right, I want to move on to Small Town Scandal okay. because uh, I've been listening to it for the last few days. Please, and please don't spoil it for me, though, because I'm not at the end yet. No, 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 no spoiling. Um, it, and it's an amazing piece of work. And from everyone I've spoken to, it seemed to have been this huge success. It seems like quite a difficult thing to put together, which we're going to talk about. But um, my experience listening to it was going in... And I knew you played every character. I think there's 45 different characters in the podcast over the course of the six episodes. You start off thinking, okay, that's Tom. Okay, that's Tom. Okay, that's Tom. And then maybe, I don't know, 10 minutes into the first episode, it's you're not thinking that anymore. You, you're just totally encapsulated by the story, which is, is, is a real credit to, to the craft. Thank you. Can you talk to us a little bit about putting it together and, and where the idea came from? Yeah, so um, I actually came into this very room and I did a, um, and I did a food themed podcast with <laughs> it probably would have been with was it, was it with Sam what well, um Raj Ganesh Ganesh Raj yes yeah, so I came in here I did a podcast oh, yeah. a food podcast with Ganesh Raj and I was hanging out with Sam afterwards the producer and he's like come up, come to me with any ideas and stuff and I thought well, nothing of it and then he sent me an email and so we kind of hung out and for some reason I well I had I have been listening to for, for many years I've been listening to true crime podcasts and really getting into it really getting into the vibe of it and so I was like oh I'd like to do one of those but how am I meant to do it I don't know any true crimes to solve nor do I want to do that and so I proposed to him doing one where um, it's all scripted so it's like a parody of a true crime podcast and then uh, the next step was me doing all the characters and he's like well we can get other actors in and I was like oh I don't know I think I just want to do them all and so then I was months late with my first draft and it was ignoring the producer, trying to avoid the emails. He's like, Where are the scripts coming soon? Silence for me. <laughs> and um, then uh, I was actually, yeah, last time I was over in the States, I had this kind of um, a, a bit of downtime. So I just kind of tuned something out and kind of sent it to him. And he was kind of into it. And we kind of did some uh, back and forth with notes and things. And the next thing I know, I'm recording it with our friend over here in the corner. Producer Adam. Producer Shout Adam. Producer, Producer, Adam. Adam. Producer Adam. And we did one kind of uh, episode together, and um, and we kind of had to focus. You have to focus on all the characters because it would just become this blur. The, it, it, it would just, the characters would all just kind of, their voices, everything just became unhinged, and I slowly became unhinged as well. So we had to kind of focus on a character at a time, but it was all heavily scripted, so you couldn't, you kind of knew where it was going and exactly how to kind of pitch the characters. And then... Um, Adam had to do a lot of work of editing it together, and there we go. Because I've watched Seth MacFarlane in a live kind of reading of a Family Guy where he plays mm. all the different characters. Yes. That looks extremely challenging. Yes. Are you? Do you have that ability to do that? No. So I've got to, whenever, like, I have to, there's always, how I like to have it is like having a, a word or something to get into the character. So if I was to do that, I'd have to stop every character and have that word to get back into that character. Right. So Sydney would be like Australian. So you, yeah, Sydney, and then you're there. And you were still there when you said there. Yeah. So uh, Shay, I'm not sure if if you said this or if you've read it somewhere, but sounded like serial, but with elements of The Office in it. Oh, is, great! Is that, is that a Shay original? I said that. Yeah. That's yeah. good, Shay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Is you're that, welcome. I like that. Is that is that the influences kind of coming into it? Um. It, no, <laughs> uh, not so much the offers, but like I like I love the office, and I'm, the office has like influenced both of them, American and British, have just influenced my life. So yes, I think that's definitely cool. That's definitely forever there. Um, what kind of, in terms of a reference of comedy, like Kath and Kim kind of comedy as well is a big thing for me, like the Australian kind of vibe as well. So that probably influenced it too. When you decide to come and attack the, the podcast medium, which mm -hmm. is different to, to other stuff you've done, theatre and film and TV, yes. do you come in with any expectations? Like, are you thinking, oh, this is the audience I want it to get to? Or are you thinking, like, if this is a success, someone might pick it up for a TV show? Or are there bigger visions of it? Not really. Like, I wanted it to be, like, something in and, in and of itself. So I just wanted it to be, like, a complete artwork in there for the world rather than leading on to something else. I think when I think of the audience, like my, because uh, I've got this kind of loyal audience on social media and the most kind of, um, the most kind of vocal of them would be females aged f like 35 to 55 would be my demographic. 
wine drinking women, white women, and like and um, and of course that kind of for younger women too, like they do love true crime. So I'm like, I felt like there was I was kind of catering. I was kind of catering to them a little bit. Yeah, that makes sense. And and the the background for it is Mata Mata. Well, no, sorry. The background for it resembles Mata Mata, which is where That's you grew right. up, right? That's right. And yeah. the small town New Zealand lend itself to this sort of true crime, everyone knows everyone sort of yes. setting. Yes. How I like to put it is that when growing up in, I've also got Thai happy in my head whenever I kind of think of Tahoya, which is a fictional town where it's set. Um, so it's probably more that the Mata Mata. The horse racing thing is definitely Mata Mata because I grew up in Mata Mata and just horse racing's everywhere. I think these small, what, what I always think about small towns in terms of murder mysteries and things is that if you, like here you don't know who the policemen are, you don't know who the law enforcements are, but in Mata Mata, in the small towns, everyone knows everyone and so even the policemen are involved a potential suspects they you know they're all kind of involved because the small towns lend itself to just that random cast of characters that get thrown into a place right uh, and such a spectrum of them hanging yeah yep so it has like i said it has been received well i know you don't like uh blowing your own trumpet but it has it's done very well is there plans to is there a season two in the works is there anything else yes yeah, so um sam the producers uh he's um sent the initial email so we're going to kind of work on something together it'll be the same kind of format we don't know whether it'll be this any similar characters or whether it'll be a whole new thing but it'll be the same format of me playing characters and a mystery to solve well, yeah you very it's, exciting uh, did you just thinking of that you playing multiple characters like mm. i think back to growing up eddie murphy is my kind of salient mm. example of of a single person playing multiple different characters is that kind of yes. an influence as well that you kind of um, Eddie Look Murphy, through. yes, Eddie Murphy, definitely. Um, uh, French and Saunders, if you know them, they were uh, really huge for me too. And then later, Chris Lilly was, um, like Summer Heights, I was really huge for me too. Mm. And so, yeah, but what, Eddie Murphy. What, what happened with Chris Lilly? I, I loved Summer Heights High, and mm. that was a, a, a real, a, in our group at that time, everyone was into it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but has it been taken down? Has that, has I think that one's been taken down. So it's because of... Jo- him playing Jonah, Jonah yeah. yeah, a Tongan boy. So just um, the society's changed and that's yeah. no longer allowed. What a great example of, of how things have moved. Um, is he still is he still carrying on? I haven't seen much he's sketch work from. Is he's has he been cancelled as well? He's making a podcast called Jamay Sang. So his character Jamay just talks as her talking about her life. Oh, so right. Jamay from Sunrise yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And it's really funny. I listen to it and I laugh out loud. Yeah. So I guess he's still trying to, him as a clown, trying to work out the avenues that he can still kind of go into. That must be so disheartening as a performer to have a body of work like mm. that judged in a different era's standards yeah. and then have it smudged from right. existence. Yeah. Like something so celebrated yeah. for years, years as this amazing piece of work and everyone's giving you credit like, oh my yeah. God, Chris Lilly, you are absolutely killing it. And yes. then times change, and then it's like, oh man, what you actually produced there was really problematic. Yeah, <laughs> amazing, right? Yeah, I read I read a piece recently about how problematic Ace Ventura Pet Detective is yes. as well in terms of trans and homophobia. And yes. it's like I read it and was like, oh yeah, shit. Yeah, actually, yeah, if you view it with today's eyes and you go, oh, yeah. wow, this doesn't <laughs> this doesn't play so well anymore. Yeah, it's, and it is a uh, I guess. There's no risk in what you do falling into those areas. Um, I tend to avoid doing, I mean, I, I don't do any one of any kind of other ethnicities or if, um, or that's not kind of like a commentary or brown face or yellow face or anything like that. I try to avoid those, but, you know, I'll be cancelled for something along the lines. I'm just holding, you know, just holding on <laughs> until it happens. Just bracing. Yeah, bracing. Just enough time will pass. Yeah, exactly. 